you mentioned before about being able to have an insight into what was happening in 2016. Yeah. What do you think happens in 2024? I don't know. I don't know. You know, I, I, um, I met with Robert Kennedy Jr. not too long ago, and he was nice enough to have uh, my wife and I to his house. It was very clear that he's trying to hearken back to a previous remembered America through his family, and he's willing to die for it. There's no question that he's willing to die to seek the presidency. I think that Americans are going to have to come to grips with the fact that um, our two political parties, either one of them could win if they wanted. But the problem is, is that they want to win as a trough. So in other words, imagine that what America wants is no more troughs. You don't want to win playing to that aspect of America if it means getting rid of the trough because the trough was your entire reason for running a political party. What do you mean when you say trough? Assume that your party gets into power. Now you get to hire all of your friends into government positions, then they get revolving door contracts with whoever they were regulating or dealing with. So effectively, everybody's going to pig out and help themselves. Okay, we got Democrats into Congress. Now they can trade their personal accounts and pass legislation and do far better than the market. You know, whatever it is. Imagine what Americans want is like, hey, stop the corruption. I don't trust why we're in Ukraine the way we're in Ukraine because I don't trust why Hunter Biden is being given a cushy salary from a, a Ukrainian company. Well, what you're telling what the, what the population is telling the two political parties is end the troughs. And the political parties are saying, okay, what else do you want? We can't give you that because that's the whole point of why we do what we do. We're not public spirited. We're not thinking about America. We're not thinking about the future. We're not thinking about the good of the world or the environment or any of the stupid stuff that we are forced to talk about every four years. We're talking about swimming pools. We're talking about um, third wives, fourth homes, you know, you're getting in the way of that. So tell us what else you want that doesn't interfere with the trough. And Americans are pretty clear. It's like, get rid of the, get rid of the goddamn troughs. You're slop, you know, you're slopping each other. You're, you're pigs at a trough. And, and now the idea is that since you're not doing anything, I want my ethnic group to be at the trough too. It's like, this has nothing to do with anything. We have to clear these people out. They're just bad people. Well, we're way too close to the 2024 election for anybody to be cleared out now. Really? I mean, what's going to happen between now and November? Oh, I don't know. I mean, how old is Joe Biden? I don't know. Okay. What are the odds that Joe Biden has a debilitating event between now and November? Including death. So he runs a 1 in 20 chance of dying in any given year or above that. So I, I don't think you know whether he's even going to make it to November. 81. Yeah. You have no idea. what the, it's, a, it's a million years between now and November. I don't know whether Donald, Jump, Donald Trump is going to be you know, facing jail time. I don't know whether there's going to be an insurrection by MAGA people that, who feel that the Department of Justice is going after a candidate for political reasons. I don't know if people are going to look at Kamala Harris as uh, you know, the likely commander in chief, why are you laughing? <laughs> Kamala Harris is like, she's become a, a meme of a meme of a meme. It's so, so absent from public life as far as I can see that it's, it's hilarious. You don't think it's hilarious? We Oh, it's hysterically funny. You're talking about Kamala Harris being in charge of the world's greatest nuclear superpower. It's, it's a scream. You're talking about Joe Biden being in charge of, the, or Donald Trump. Well, Trump will be older than Biden on this next re-election than Biden was when he first entered office. Well, yeah, I mean, Biden began at 29 in the Senate in 72. Yeah. Look, this whole thing is, Chris, let me, let me just be more forthcoming. People want to know why I've somewhat retreated from 
public life. I have no clue how to talk about this stuff. This whole thing is so incredibly stupid. Nobody has ever done this in the United States. We had an election in 1980 because Ronald Reagan was 69 years old. Age was central. We've never been in this territory before. Does that not mean that you should spend more time trying to grapple with ideas if you're not sure about them? What does that mean? That if your concern is, you mentioned, people have asked why you've stepped back from having more public conversations. One of the reasons is that a lot of the topics that you try to grapple with don't seem to make sense that much anymore. Is that not the time when you're supposed to grapple harder with them? If somebody says to you, uh, Eric, uh, you know, the previous election, uh, are, are you supportive of the Hillside Strangler or uh, Ted Bundy? Go. Milgram well, Buster. I don't know if Charles Manson might run as a, as a third party candidate, so it's too early to say. This is all so pathetically, crazily stupid. What am I supposed to do? Just say, get off my lawn every four seconds? I, I, I don't know how to react anymore. There's no part of this world at the moment that looks sane to me. And, and, you know, I've done the requisite work, which is if that's the way it feels to you, then you should look at your own sanity. Okay, let's, let's entertain the idea that I've lost my mind. It's like, no, no, this is all completely one problem of managed reality. One of the things that I am concerned about toward the back end of this year is whether or not whoever wins is going to be accepted in even remotely a peaceful way. It doesn't mean the same thing as it used to. Look, there's some mystique and some majesty necessary to make these things work. You have to believe that the Supreme Court is a bunch of incredibly smart legal mind. You have to believe that the President of the United States is a, an exalted being who has power to make decisions on the behalf of the country. You mm. can't afford Nancy Pelosi's husband trading up a storm like this. Everything's become Instagram stories behind the scenes of the Kardashians. Nobody trusts experts exist. When your kid needs a life-saving surgery, you're going to find out that all you're drawing off on Twitter about screw the experts doesn't mean anything to you. You're like, save my child. We need experts. We need institutions. We need lies. We need fictions. We need stories. We need adult-level, public-spirited fictionalizations of the truth. I'm not claiming we don't. But now you've got this different class of people who says, okay, you don't want the truth. We need to have stories. Let's just make up stuff and put stuff in our pockets. How much of it is coordination? How much of it's cowardice? Well, I would f rephrase that a little differently, maybe. I would say uh, nobody smart has gotten anything to work like this in a long time. The reason we have Donald Trump versus Joe Biden is that everybody failed. I failed. I've been podcasting, reaching millions. I've been teaching people about all sorts of things. One of the things I find f very funny is that there's a, if you look at um, the negativity that follows you around, there are these very conserved things that, one of them is Eric goes on forever and says nothing. If you look at the sheer density of information I've dropped on podcasts, I'll put that up against anybody, you know? But it's like, we want Eric to disappear. We want Eric not to say things. Who do you think is behind that? Don't know. Because you stopped your podcast. Yeah. I was a fan of that podcast. That first episode that you did with Peter, I thought was, was fantastic. I can't tell you how many people every day, where's the portal? Bring the portal back. What does it take to bring the portal back? Are you tempted? Mick Jagger said something about Brian Jones that has just haunted me. And he said, Fame doesn't sit comfortably on anyone's shoulders, but there are shoulders upon which it appears not to sit at all. And I thought, okay, if there's one guy who's good at being famous, it must be Mick Jagger. 
And for him to say, it doesn't sit comfortably on any shoulders, if you just parse it, you think, oh, he's telling us something. It looks like I'm good at being famous, but it's not easy and it's not something that's comfortable. And then he makes the second point about Brian Jones. And he says, there appear to be shoulders upon which it does not sit at all. And I think I don't like the fact that you can't turn it off. Mm. It's a one-way street for it's a very a long time. That's right. And, you know, there's a point where you're wandering through Istanbul and somebody yells out Eric Weinstein and you're like, there's no way to get away from this. And you didn't like that? W wonderful guy. Um, most everybody I meet is fantastic. I like lots of, of, lots of being well known. But the toothpaste hasn't, I, I've hoped that the toothpaste would sort of go back in the tube. I could do a little bit of podcasting here and there and it just doesn't work. So you don't want to, are you at the moment are not prepared to bring the portal back? No, I'm thinking about it. I'm thinking about it because I can't get back to, look, I have fantasies about not being well known and I don't, and I think it's too late. Deeper into the breach. Look, but also nobody wants to listen to this. You know, remember what you were saying before? Milgram questions. Hmm. I don't, I don't no, wait, wait, let's play with it because I, I think it's a fun, it's a fun idea. Hmm. You ever heard somebody say something? Oh, the paparazzi. <laughs> You're like, yeah. But actually, I believe it. I wouldn't want to live with paparazzi. In other news, this episode is brought to you by. Shopify. The reason that you started a business is not to learn how to build a website or to code or to do inventory management. It's to sell the thing that you care about. And Shopify helps to move all of the other stuff out of the way so that you can focus on the thing that matters most. That's why we use Shopify for Newtonic. So if you've ever bought a can of this from our website, you've bought from Shopify. Also, they power over 10% of all e-commerce in the United States, including huge brands like Gymshark. So if it's good enough for them, it's probably good enough for you. Whether you're selling scented soap or offering outdoor outfits, Shopify helps you sell at every stage of your business. Shopify also helps you turn browsers into buyers with the internet's best converting checkout, 36% better than other e-commerce platforms. Right now, you can sign up for a $1 per month trial period by going to the link in the description below or heading to shopify.com slash modernwisdom all lowercase. That's shopify.com slash modern wisdom to grow your business no matter what stage you're in. Thank you very much for tuning in. If you enjoyed that clip with Eric, you will love the full length podcast, which you can watch right here. Go on. Tap it. <laughs>